The entertainment company often responsible for putting a bit of smile on our faces is looking, well, rather miserable. The uh, House of Mouse is being tested across all sectors of its vast empire, which spans theme parks, film studios and online streaming services. The company posted uh, a net loss of $460 million in its third quarter, a steep drop from the $1.4 billion net income it made over the same period last year. Much of this was due to one-off charges linked to ending various content and third-party arrangements. However, issues with its uh, Disney Plus streaming service are ongoing. It added 800,000 new subscribers, uh, 100,000 fewer than expected, and a drop of 7.4% on the previous quarter. There was something to be cheerful about, however, in the Parks Division. It reported a 13% increase in revenue, buoyed by visitor numbers at its Shanghai Resort, which was open for the full quarter compared to a year earlier when it was uh, all but shut by uh, the pandemic. Well, Disney's uh, chief uh, executive, Bob Iger, admitted the company is facing a challenging environment and vowed the entertainment giant will cut costs by billions to try to boost revenue. Part of that plan is introducing a multi-tier subscription service to customers in the UK and Canada beginning in November. This follows uh, a similar move in the United States. The company also said it will cut down on password sharing, a move adopted by uh, the streaming giant Netflix earlier in the year. Well, let's talk to uh, Jamie Lumley, a senior tech analyst at uh, global research company Third Bridge. Uh, Jamie, good to see you. Welcome to the program. Well, f I mean, first of all, your reaction to uh, these, uh, these results. Great to be here. And looking at those results, there's certainly a lot of different parts to keep an eye on. Just breaking down those three major segments, there are definitely a lot of moving pieces. Within parks, there's certainly room, uh, there's a lot of encouragement looking at the rebound in international attendance. And then also, despite the uh, speculation that park traffic has been down considerably this summer, that has not reflected in the overall revenue numbers, still rising year over year. But then also looking over at streaming, it's again a bit of a mixed bag. There's been more or less flat growth in the U.S. markets and an increasing erosion of some of that international business, largely driven due to uh, the Indian market with the loss of those cricket rights. But at the same time, Disney is still able to drive those losses within streaming a little bit lower. There's still a long path towards profitability. We've been hearing from our experts that that timeline is more likely in 2025 versus the company's goal of 2024, but it is still moving in the right direction in that sense. And then lastly, look Looking at linear TV, this has been a major concern as the old cash cow of the business used to fund the build out of the streaming platform, which has increasingly been under a lot of pressure, posting, while a loss overall internationally and in the U.S., a less severe loss than in previous quarters. So there's definitely a lot of things that piece out there, but a couple of areas to be encouraged by, but some challenges to be aware of as well. Is it simply too big, doing too much, stretch too thin, whatever you want to call it? It's a good question. I think that what Disney has often been lauded for in the past is its ability to have this flywheel of creating uh, noble characters, building out that IP, and then having that be successful in its parks and its consumer segments and really having all these pieces gel together. What's challenging for Disney right now is not all of those pieces are moving as smoothly as they used to. Just looking at, again, the traditional linear business under a lot of pressure, internationally it swung to a net loss compared to the year ago period, and its revenue was under significant pressure and then also looking at the success of its theatrical releases while overall not terrible versus some of the other studios out there it's not knocking out the park thanks star wars and marvel performances had previously so while it can all work together seamlessly right now it does seem that not everything's firing on all cylinders and when you compare it to uh, the other people in the sector i mean how does disney plus find itself among uh, all the competition it's a good question, and there are a few things to highlight here. What we hear from our experts repeatedly is just how looking at the U.S. and some of the early markets that these streaming platforms have been released, it is an incredibly saturated market, which makes it hard to have that streaming growth. If you look at Disney Plus and Hulu and ESPN Plus, they were flat to down in terms of subscribers in the most recent quarter. And that is not too dissimilar from competitors, but one thing to point out is, 
Uh, the competition is starting to look at Netflix's initiative to crack down on password sharing as that was able to drive uh, renewed growth in the U.S. and really allow that company to post stronger subscriber uh, numbers than they'd seen in a number of previous quarters. So as Disney starts to look at that initiative, this could be something to try to expand that base and crack down on some accounts which have been sharing and really try to renew that growth, which is also potentially challenged as a company implements price hikes. At the same time, it does have its ad-supported tier, which it has not moved prices on yet. So that is something which could also start to see that segment grow. How do you turn around the theme parks? That is the million to billion dollar question, as certainly the company has tried to uh, raise prices there while also dealing with inflation and managing a large number of investments to build out these parks. But there are a lot of challenges. Looking at one macro trend, there's just the changes in consumer behavior in terms of where they're allocating their leisure dollars, be that through travel or just looking at now that we're a bit removed from that initial uh, release of pent-up COVID demand, where there was huge huge impetus for consumers to travel, to go on vacations, starting to see that not quite be the same trend now. Uh, but then also understanding that there are softer, uh, you know, could be a softer economic environment. There could be more decisions around where necessarily leisure dollars are going and factoring that in with prices while at the same time trying to, from Disney's standpoint, drive up traffic to parks. It's a tough problem to fix. Jamie, as they used to say at the end of uh, the cartoons on the last caption, that's all, folks. Uh, good to see you, Jamie. Thanks for coming on the show. Jamie Lumley at Third Bridge.